Well, as we've been working through uh, the beginning portions of Matthew's gospel, I'm sure you've probably noticed that, that he's utilized uh, some different ways of communicating with people. Uh, the obvious way that God communicates, of course, is through the Scripture, and we see that in chapter 2 of Matthew's Gospel when Herod wants to know where uh, the king of the Jews has been born, uh, and he goes to the chief, uh, chief uh, priest and the scribes, and, and they answer that the Scripture tells them that it's Bethlehem. They actually quote from Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. Now, when Joseph uh, is contemplating whether he's going to marry Mary or not, uh, an angel of the Lord speaks to him in a dream during his sleep and reveals to him that it's okay for them to get married. And then when we look at the wise men who arrive in Jerusalem, they're looking for the one who's been born king of the Jews, and they reveal that they've come because they've been directed by a star. So it's interesting to think about uh, these different means that God has used here in the opening chapters of Matthew to communicate his will uh, to various people. And it brings up a legitimate question for us to ask, and that is, how does God guide us today? More specifically, should we expect God to guide us in the same way that he guided Joseph? He guided Joseph through the angel. In fact, uh, he, he uh, spoke to the wise men through a dream as well. Uh, the angel is mentioned in the reference to Joseph, the angel's not mentioned in reference to the wise men, but it could have been an angel, I suppose. It just tells us, though, that it was in a dream. And of course, he's speaking to them through the star. And um, so should we expect God to speak to us and guide us in, in these kinds of ways? Well, um, let's think about that. It, it is important thinking about dreams, first of all. It's important for us to understand uh, that there's a context for, for God speaking through dreams. Uh, it, in the Old Testament time period, and even into the New Testament time period as well, it was very common for people in, in the world at large to, to think that they could get some kind of guidance uh, through dreams. In fact, they would often have temples uh, that you could go to in different uh, societies where you could go into the temple or some other kind of a holy place and you could go to sleep at night in that place and, and expect that maybe you could have some kind of a dream that would hopefully give you some direction on, on some important decision that you're trying to make in your life. Um, some nations actually had religions uh, religious figures, I should say, who were highly skilled in interpreting dreams. And uh, they would often uh, give counsel to governing authorities uh, regarding important decisions that they had to make. But of course, when we come to the Old Testament itself, we, we find that, that there are several examples of people being guided by dreams. We think, uh, I'll, I'll share with you some, Abraham. Uh, and uh, Sarah uh, go into the Negev and there's a king there named Abimelech and uh, Abraham tells him, he said, you know, this is my sister, Sarah. And so he takes, Abimelech takes Sarah to be his wife and uh, he would have done so had it not been for the Lord uh, warning him not to in a dream. Um, God spoke to Jacob in a dream. Uh, Jacob was out one night and he found a rock, put his head on the rock, went to sleep, had a dream of uh, this, uh, this, this uh, stairway reaching up into the heavens and there were angels going up and down on this thing and the Lord was standing there and the Lord was telling him uh, that uh, he was going to have a, a, a whole bunch of offspring and, and all the peoples of the world were going to be blessed through him and, and through his offspring. Uh, the Lord also spoke to him uh, in a dream, uh, telling him it was time for him to, 
to leave his father-in-law Laban. And uh, then when he decided to do that, then Laban didn't want that to happen, but the Lord spoke to him in a dream, said, uh, you need to go ahead and let him go. Then, of course, one of the most famous examples of all is, is the dream that Pharaoh had during the days of Joseph. Uh, remember, Joseph was in prison, but he had the ability to interpret dreams. And, and uh, so Pharaoh had a dream of uh, you know, seven, uh, uh, there were going to be seven good years followed by seven bad years. Joseph was able to interpret that dream and, and, and save the day uh, for the nation of Egypt and, and for a lot of other people as well. Then God appeared to Solomon in a dream when he was a young man and David, his father, had uh, uh, passed the throne down to him and, and Solomon uh, comes uh, to power and, and he's uh, asleep one night and the Lord comes to him in this dream and says to him, he says, uh, um, what would you like? He said, I'll give you anything you want. And he said, oh, I'm a young guy. I don't know too much <laughs> about how to lead people. He said, I think some wisdom would be nice. And so the Lord gave him that. So there are all kinds of examples like that in, in, the, in the scriptures. And they reveal to us that God used dreams in order to communicate his will to his people. Now, when it comes to uh, the star, being guided by the star, well, that makes us think of things like, you know, the zodiac sign, the horoscopes, uh, astrology, all of that. And that leads into what the Bible refers to as divination, which is trying to predict the future through some kind of hidden occultic knowledge or or some kind of supernatural means, or, or just astrology itself, which is like just the looking at the stars in order to try to predict the future based upon the alignment of the stars or the alignment of the planets or uh, things of that nature. Well, the Bible forbids this kind of thing. Uh, let me make that clear to you. In the book of Leviticus, in chapter 19, in verse 26, it says this. It says, you are not to practice divination or witchcraft. And then in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, we read in verse 9 through verse 12 these words, When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not imitate the detestable customs of those nations. No one among you is to sacrifice his son or daughter in the fire, practice divination, Tell fortunes, interpret omens, practice sorcery, cast spells, consult a medium or a spiritus, or inquire the dead. Everyone who does these acts is detestable to the Lord, and the Lord your God is driving out the nations before you because of these detestable acts. And then in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19, uh, we read these words. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. When they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the spiritists who chirp and mutter, shouldn't a people inquire of their God? Shouldn't they inquire, should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? So we have these clear uh, words that uh, this kind of thing, you know, looking to the stars, uh, practicing divination, all that. It, there's no place for that in a believer's life. In fact, and I won't quote it, but in Deuteronomy 17 verses 2 to 7, we are told that uh, the people who actually uh, worshipped heavenly bodies, and there were people who would do that kind of thing, that was an action that if it were found in the nation of Israel, it was to be condemned by stoning. So, so there's just no place for looking to the skies in hopes of predicting the future. And so, you know, you don't need to be uh, dealing with the horoscopes and tarot cards and palm reading, any of that kind of stuff. There's, there's no place for that. As we come back to Matthew, though, we actually, when we look at this text, we realize this is not what the wise men were doing. They weren't trying to predict the future. They were following an, uh, an announcement. Uh, the, the Lord 
was using what we call general revelation, which is God speaking through nature to communicate a message to, to people so as to draw them to Jesus Christ. That's what's going on in this passage. It's, they're, not, they're not trying to predict the future. Uh, the future had already come into the present. Uh, there had been predictions uh, made by the prophets uh, of this king of the Jews who would be born. Now he's been born, and when they come, they don't say, we're looking for the one who will be born king of the Jews. No, they're looking for the one who has already been born king of the Jews. So the Lord had made this announcement to them through general revelation, that is, through the, the stars. And uh, so we should conclude that while God can and does speak through nature, um, it's important for us to understand that these guys actually didn't get to Jesus until they also received special revelation. Because the text tells us that they followed the star and it led them to Jerusalem. And then they began to ask questions. Then the scripture was finally revealed that the baby was to be born in Bethlehem. And then they went to Bethlehem and found him after being guided even further by the star. So God was was working everything together, using the general revelation and the special revelation to get them to Jesus. And that's the way God operates. So there's an excellent uh, summary that kind of reveals how all of this works together that's found in the book of, of Hebrews. I wanted to, to read the opening uh, couple of verses of Hebrews chapter 1. Listen to what it says. It says, Long ago God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets at different times and in different ways. In these last days he's spoken to us by his son. So by way of summary, what I'm trying to get at is this, that God can communicate to you and to me any way that he wants to. Because he's God, he can certainly communicate in various ways, and I think oftentimes he does. I mean, he certainly can use a dream if he wants to. He can use a star if he wants to. He can use this kind of, you, know, you ever felt that gut feeling that maybe something, uh, God was leading you to do something? I think he can speak that way. I think sometimes he speaks to us through a friend. Sometimes it happens in a sermon or a book that you read or, uh, you know, uh, uh, some circumstance in life. I mean, there are all kinds of ways that, that, that we, we sense that maybe God is, is leading us. But here's, here's the important thing for you to remember. God will always lead you in a way that is consistent with his word. And so you need to look for his will to be verified by the scriptures. And, and you, the best way to ever discern God's will is to just stay committed to knowing God as he's revealing himself page after page in the book called the Bible. God wants... Uh, us to, to keep in mind that that's the way he has chosen to reveal things to us today. So it is true. God can speak to us in many different ways. But he's always going to guide us in a way that is consistent with the scripture and never in a way that's contrary to it. And all the ways in which God speaks to us they're all going to be designed to do, I think, the same as the, that we see with the, the wise men here. It's always going to be designed to lead us to Jesus so that we can worship him and know him and live for him. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you today that you've given us clear revelation that points us to Jesus Christ. Because without Jesus, we don't have any hope in this world. Without Jesus, we don't have any eternal life. And so it only makes sense for us to, to seek you in a way that draws us closer to Jesus. And Father, I pray that as we 
always are thinking about the decisions that we're trying to make in our lives, that we'll realize that what you are about is you're always trying to draw us closer to Jesus. And if, if that isn't our goal, then we're, we're thinking wrongly. We're, we're, we're being wrongheaded in our, our minds. We've got to be Jesus-focused because you're Jesus-focused. And it's because of Jesus that we have life. It's because of Jesus that we're forgiven of our sins. It's because of Jesus that we have hope. It's because of Jesus we have power. Without Jesus, we don't have anything. So help us to always remember that as we look to how you're going to guide us. Because you're always going to guide us in a way that's going to draw us closer to Jesus. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.